So what we knew about tepertumumab already was that it was effective in treating patients who'd had relatively recent onset of their symptoms um, and who had fairly marked degrees of proptosis or eye bulging. The data that we put at, that were presented at the AAO meeting included a couple of things that have expanded on our understanding of the benefit that tepertumumab may bring to patients with thyroid eye disease. First, it did look at patients who had had a duration of disease that was a little bit longer, so an average of more like a year of symptoms, and showed very similar efficacy to what you saw in patients with shorter duration. This is reassuring because it means that those patients who could, those patients who could get benefit is a, a wider group than we might have thought initially. And in our patients, we looked at their most severely impaired eye for most of our initial clinical data, but many of these patients can have some degree of asymmetry in their disease, and so they may also have a, an eye that is less severely impacted. When we looked at those patients who had less severe impact in their other eye, those eyes also got uh, substantially better. So it indicates that not only can you have a longer disease duration and still potentially get benefit from tepertumumab, but also those patients who had less severe impact could also get benefit from tepertumumab. So I think what this really does is give physicians a better idea of the breadth of patients who might be able to benefit from Tepeza. Um, so it's continually expanding beyond our relatively restricted clinical trial definitions of what patients needed to look like to help a physician understand and help a patient understand the degree of benefit they might get, um, even if they're further in uh, their disease duration or if they have somewhat less impactful symptoms.